Hey! <laughs> That's not how we start a video. <laughs> This video is supported in part by Skillshare. I don't know how we start a video. I've never been in the start of a video. Welcome to Make Thrift Buy, the show where you usually send in items of clothing or accessories that you've seen on the internet and then I try my best to recreate them. However, today the suggestion comes from our very own Luchi. Hi. If you don't know Luchi, that's Luchi. I'm her fiance. We're engaged. Hi. So what is your suggestion? What do you want me to try and recreate? I'd like you to recreate, cre create, recreate. I want you to make me a wallet. But she wants me to make him a wallet. Mm -hmm. I had a paper wallet. It disintegrated because it was made of paper. Uh, <laughs> that happens. <laughs> but the reason I had a paper wallet because I often wear skinny jeans and I want a wallet that's thin and it will just not make a big bump in my pocket. Okay. Which is why I don't want the modern style of like big chunky leather wallet. So also, they're very expensive. Yes. And leather. Okay, so you don't want a big wallet. You want a small, like kind of square shaped one. Maybe one that just like folds over, but isn't yes. too chunky. Yes. That's what you want. Okay. From a neutral material. Okay, so I kind of have some styles mm -hmm. that I have imagined. I'm going to put them here over your face. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey! Um, so I'm gonna try and make something similar-ish to that, but more of your style. You kind of like quite neutral things. Neutral. You don't want it to be super colorful no. either. Okay, little time travel here. We actually already found some fabric yes. for the outer of the wallet, which is kind of what prompted um, this whole project. Yeah. So we were at Reverse Garbage in Sydney, and which is a place that sells kind of like disused samples of fabrics, for example. Mm -hmm. And we found one of those disused samples, which was an old upholstery piece, old upholstery sample, which yeah. was stripey. And it's like neutral and stripey. It's very good. And yeah, Luchi was like, I love that. Can you make me a wallet out of that? And I was like, okay, let's try it. Annika pointed out lots of other more colorful scraps and she was like, what about this for a wallet? And I was like, no, a wallet is for business. So let's get started. Wish me luck. Good luck, wallet make. <laughs> so without telling Luchi, I also thought I might be able to make use of these old black skinny jean scraps that once belonged to him, especially as upcycling old jeans is the theme for the current Make Thrift Try Challenge. I thought it would be funny because seriously, Luchi basically lives in black skinny jeans. If you wanted to cosplay as Luchi, I don't know why you would, but skinny black jeans would be how you'd do it. So that's why I'm adding old jeans to the materials that I wanna use. Okay, so that and this stripy upholstery fabric is all the scraps that I'm going to use for now. Let's take this over to my craft table. Now for this, I decided to use a pattern that already comes with its own fairly detailed tutorial. So instead of showing you in detail how it all comes together, I'll just be doing a time-lapse for this video, pausing if I have any important notes or difficulties with it or tips for the tutorial. And then I'll also do a review for the pattern at the end. End, so you'll all know if it's worth doing yourself, how hard the instructions are, how long it takes, and all that good stuff. The pattern and tutorial is the Bifold Wallet by Modest Maven, which I'll put a link to below. And I was drawn to it because it's just a nice, simple bifold wallet without any bells and whistles, which is what Luchi wants. Okay, so let's talk about what's happening on screen. The tutorial has asked me to cut out two rectangles for the outer part of the wallet, which I'm cutting out from this stripy upholstery scrap. It also asked me to cut out two lining pieces. First, I thought I might use the denim, but then I quickly changed my mind because I realized that the lining needs to be quite a thin fabric or the wallet will be way, way too bulky. So I got out this thin lining fabric that I have in bulk. It's a typical lining fabric that would line like a skirt or something, kind of satiny feeling. I cut out two more rectangles from it, which were the same size as the outer rectangles. Finally, I found a place to use those denim scraps. The wallet pattern specifies a closure, so I cut out a little square from the denim jeans fabric so it could become the wallet closure. And lastly, the wallet also needs pockets inside it to hold cards. Again, I didn't have a scrap fabric I liked enough, so I grabbed this other thrifted fabric that I have in bulk, this nice gray color. It's basically a nice light cotton and I cut out two long rectangles from it. So here's all the pieces I need. The outer, the lining, the pockets, and a wallet closure made of old jeans. Time to construct a wallet. First, ironing. It may not be the most fun aspect of sewing, 
but it's very, very important. If you forego ironing your fabrics, your projects just won't turn out as nicely, especially something like this. The first thing the tutorial said to sew was the wallet closure. And I realized that the old jeans fabric has elastane in it, which made it a nightmare to sew as it twisted and stretched all over the place. And so I was very glad that I was only using that fabric for such a tiny piece of the wallet. Next, I moved on to the lining pieces. I pinned them right sides together and I was meant to sew all the way around on these outer edges leaving a gap here which I promptly forgot and sewed all the way across. Well that's what seam rippers are for. Okay having put the gap back into the lining pieces by removing the stitches here I moved on to the pockets. Now the pockets had to be ironed and creased in this real funky way to create multiple pockets. It basically needs to be ironed like a concertina fan. This was probably the trickiest part of the tutorial for me and I spent no joke, about one hour just looking at these pieces back at the tutorial again, looking back at the fabric, convinced that the tutorial was wrong. But it wasn't wrong, it was just worded confusingly. What I ended up doing was this, and it might help make the tutorial make more sense if you're also stuck on this part. So there's this long strip that is your pocket. Get a card that you don't mind accidentally ruining, like an old loyalty card or something like that. What's important is that it's the same size as a regular credit card because that's what will eventually go in the pockets. That's what you're making them for. Fold one short edge of the fabric strip down four inches, that's 10 centimeters, and press with an iron. Flip it over. Line the card up with the folded edge like this and watch carefully because this was the part that confused me. Pull the long end of the fabric strip up till it hits the bottom of the card. This will make sure that the pocket is the correct depth for a credit card. Then put a finger on the fabric so that it'll make another fold about one inch, that's 2.5 centimeters above the card. And then fold the fabric back on itself. Carefully remove the card and then Thanks arm for getting in the way there. All I did was remove the card anyway. Press the whole thing down with an iron to create creases where you folded it. And then repeat this twice until the bottom fold of the last pocket lines up with the raw edge underneath, here. This top bit, the bit left over from the last fold, might be a little bit long. Just cut the excess, so anything that's over the four inch length of the pocket, off. Oh, I also recommend you pin or clip the sides really well at this point to hold all the creases in place. And I am pretty sure that's the proper way to make the pockets for this. At least it worked well for me. So I hope that was helpful. Anyway, in my confusion, I ended up with just one decent pocket that I actually did right and one kind of weird pocket that I was just making up as I was trying to figure it out but I'm not going to redo it because it'll probably still work fine so I soldiered on. I cut both pocket pieces to the same length and I sewed down the sides to keep the ironed creases in place. Then as I was sewing, I had a consultation with the client. As I was showing him how the wallet was looking and how it would work, he was really happy with it, except he had two things that he wanted to change. One, he wanted a zip up pocket in there so that there'll be a little pocket for spare change. I hadn't thought about that. I hand stitched a zipper to one of the pocket pieces. I didn't film it unfortunately, but basically I attached the zipper right sides together to one of the card pocket openings and I stitched it in place, turning it right sides out when I was done. Two, he wasn't a fan of the jeans closure tab. <sighs> that thing took me so long to sew. But okay, okay, all right, what do they say? The customer's always right. It wasn't that he didn't like the jeans material per se, it's just that he didn't want a closure tab at all. He thought it made the wallet unnecessarily bulky and that men's wallets apparently usually don't have a closure tab. So good riddance to this piece. New day, time to finish this sucker. So what I'm doing now that I've prepared all the different pieces is that I'm gonna put everything together. The pockets go onto one of the outer pieces on its right side and get sewn into place around the edges. And it's actually really starting to look like a wallet now, which is exciting. I grabbed the other outer piece, clipped it onto the front of the almost wallet, right sides together, and then I sewed the whole thing together. Then I clipped off all the seam allowances, which was really important to do, especially because this upholstery fabric is thick. So I trimmed really close to the stitches to try and remove as much bulk as possible. Then I slipped the main wallet inside the lining piece and I sewed all the way around the top, joining the two right sides together. Wait, oh no, I put the wallet in wrong sides. Uh, 
Okay, making bags and wallets is not my forte. It's still really confusing to me because I am basically a beginner in this realm and I'm still trying to get my head around how linings work. So I unpicked everything, well, the stitches I just did, and then I redid this. Like I said before, I put the wallet outer into the lining with everything right sides together. Yay! And then I clipped them together around the open top edge and then I sewed all the way around the top edge. Then I turned it all inside out or right sides out rather through that very important gap that we made before in the lining piece. I cleaned up any awry threads and I pushed the lining down into the wallet. I gave the whole thing a good iron and then I did a final top stitch around that open edge where the main wallet and the lining joins up. And so, how did it go? Here it is! It's done! Here is the, I think, really handsome looking wallet. I'm really, really proud of how this piece turned out. So let's find out what Luciano thinks of it. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> Hi, it is actually, it's about one, one and a half months mm -hmm. later and we wanted to give the wallet a proper test drive. That's true, um, to test see. driving it in my butt pocket. Yep, and to check out the durability of it because that's important. Yeah. What do you think of it? I really like it. I think it's probably my favorite wallet I've ever had. I love it. Really? Yeah. Aww. It's really good. I really like the combination of this gray inside with the stripes outside. It's almost kind of the same color. It is quite flat as you can see. So this is with everything inside it. Um, it holds all the cards really well. I've got lots and lots of cards of random cards. Everyone gives a you really a card. A really good thing that I liked about this pattern is that the cards, uh, the pockets all face the inside of the wallet. So once it's closed, yes. they're not going to slip out. So I do feel bad about uh, vetoing your closure idea, but it doesn't need a closure for that reason. Like, because it's not going to, you yeah, know. Yeah, the jeans can, closure wasn't needed. Nothing's going to fall out of there because they hang the other way. Another good thing about the wallet I forgot to mention. So it's got these like main card pockets, but then it's also got these bigger pockets in where the... Whoa, I didn't even know it. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So what I do is the cards I need access to all the time, like my ID or train card or whatever, I'll put in these pockets that you can easily get. And then all the random like store cards that cards give you, I just put them back in this. Oh, that's awesome. A big back pocket. So my idea that I wanted you to add a zipper, mm. which was not in the pattern, yeah. that actually doesn't really work. But you've got coins in there. Yeah. So the thing is I've got coins in here, but getting them out is another. Okay, show me. Get them out. It's pretty difficult. So imagine I'm trying to get exact change at a store. <laughs> I've got to... Okay, hang on. Okay, there's one. That's 50 cents. <laughs> what if you move this card out? Is it well, then I can't have a card there. Okay. <laughs> the other thing is that I can't tell which coins are which inside. Okay, Surely. the coin pocket yeah. didn't really work. I tend to do what I would have ended up doing any way without a coin pocket, which is I just put them in this top flap with Yeah, the, so this is where, cash. like... Oh, Australian money. Oh, oh, oh. If you're from elsewhere, here's your it's payment so... for the wallet. Five Australian dollars, ma'am. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's a really nice wallet. So, conclusion is... You gotta make it. Except, get someone to make it for you if you don't know how. So, now that I've reviewed the wallet, two thumbs up. Why don't you review the tutorial you actually used to make it? Yes, I Is that as I good will. as the wallet itself? Okay, the first thing I want to review is the time it took. So all up, it took me four and a half hours to make this wallet. Thank you. <laughs> That's also, okay. I didn't realize it had taken so long. Yeah, when people don't sew, they don't know how long things take to make, do they? <laughs> Sewing problems! Not a clue. But one hour of that time was hand stitching on the zipper pocket that didn't end up working. <laughs> no. Well, they don't have to do that. So really, it actually took about three and a half hours hours if you're gonna take out that part. Not bad. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is how easy it was to sew. So I wouldn't give this a go if you've just learned how to sew, if you're just starting out. It was a little bit tricky and a little bit fiddly. Okay. That said, um, there are not a lot of specialized stitches. Every stitch you're gonna do is gonna be a straight stitch that sometimes we have to turn a corner, but that's it. You're gonna be yeah. sewing through a lot of layers at one point, but as long as you haven't used super bulky fabrics apart from on the outside then you'll be fine. That Do works. not sew this out of st old stretchy mm. jeans. That would not be fun. <laughs> Mostly what you need for this is accuracy. You need to get your seam allowances really correct otherwise things are going to go 
awry really quickly. Mm. So for anyone who's been sewing for a little while um, or is used to making uh, bags or wallets, you'll find this pretty simple to do. So I'm going to give it a final rating. <laughs> so I give the tutorial four out of five stars. But what about four out of five needles? Four out of five bobbins. Okay, what are we doing? <laughs> okay, I like that. I like four out of five bobbins. Okay, okay I give this four out of five bobbins because it is relatively quick, fun, and easy to follow. And it just turns out really, really nice as yeah. well. Like, I think this is one of the nicest looking things that I've made. I make Luchi show it to everybody. <laughs> it's my favorite wallet that I've had. Oh. I got an unsolicited compliment on the wallet from a woman in a Japanese restaurant as I paid the bill. She Ooh. said, that's a very nice wallet. And I said, my fiance made it for me. So there you go. Strange is that it was good, so you know it is. Yeah, exactly. So thank you, Modest Maven, for the awesome tutorial. Make sure you uh, go and check out their website if you'd like to make one for yourself. The links are in the description. So it's 2019. Happy New Year, everyone. Do you have any New Year's goals, Luciano? Yes. Oh, yeah? But I don't want to share them because that will jinx them. Okay, I am asking you because the mm -hmm. sponsor of today's video is Skillshare. Oh, hey Skillshare. What's hey up? Skillshare, how you doing? Oh, hey Skillshare, come ah, in, we were just talking that. about you. So my New Year's goal, my goal for 2019, mm -hmm. is to improve my basic animation skills. Oh, that'd so be that cool. I think that would be really cool because I've, I've been it's something I've been wanting to learn for ages and I think it would help improve my YouTube videos as well and it's also just something I've always found interesting. Skillshare is an online community for creators where you can learn new skills in areas like business, design, and more, with over 25,000 classes to choose from. Wow, that's a lot of classes. Yeah. <laughs> I legitimately did not know there was that many courses on there. Yeah, it's actually awesome. I would not that's recommend heaps. something to you if I didn't enjoy it. And I have gone through a couple of the illustration and animation courses and they are legitimately so high quality. I really think they it is a valuable service if you're mm. wanting to learn something new. For example, yeah. you can take beginner friendly courses in fashion design or in illustration or animation, photography, film, YouTube based running a small business and that is really just the tip of the iceberg there are just so many things on there I think another good thing about it is that you are learning skills that you would probably learn in a more formal environment but you don't have to do assessments you don't mm. have to work to somebody else's timetable you can just learn the skills oh in yeah your it's really flexible at your own pace that sounds nice. So it's also super affordable. It is hmm. less than $10 a month if you get the annual subscription. Not bad. Yeah, like compared to going and doing an actual like real life course or yeah. going to college or uni or something like that to learn yeah. these skills, it's a lot more affordable. It's very cheap. Skillshare's premium membership gives you unlimited access to all 25,000 plus courses. It's totally flexible. You can learn whenever you want. Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving in 2019. And if you would like a free two month trial, the two first months free, two months, totally free, then just click the link in the description box down below, totally risk free. And this is valid for only the first 500 people. So go click it now. Get in fast. Be one of the, gr the, gr the 500, the special five. <laughs> the 500 Club. Shh. Be part of the 500 Club and join the over 7 million creators who are learning with Skillshare today. Oh wow, they got a lot of users. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting the sponsors that keep this channel going. Yes. I am really excited for all the new projects that I will be bringing you in 2019. I feel refreshed. I feel ready to go. Um, we'll see you all. I'll see you all. Maybe Lushy will. Who knows? I'll see you all in my next video. But bye for now. Bye. Stay crafty, everyone. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just love you, dog. I didn't know what to do. Thank you to all my wonderful supporters for making this video possible. If you've learned something or you like these videos and you want to ensure that they keep on coming in the world of AdSense demonetization and algorithms, go to co-fi.com forward slash Annika Victoria for a one-off contribution or to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria to support me on a regular basis. Stay wonderful and stay crafty.